Liz Feldman, an Emmy nominee for the Netflix comedy Dead to Me with Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini. The final season is debuting on Netflix in November. Uh, Liz, I wanted to start there. I want to start at the end. Actually, no spoilers and stuff. But like, when did you realize this? The way the show concludes is how you wanted to end it up. And I guess like, yeah, like when did that come to you and how did you get there? So the end came to me halfway through shooting season two. Um, you know, I always knew it was going to be like a short lived series because of the um, because of the situation, because of the sort of heightened, um, uh, you know, plot twists and things that happen on the show. Like I always wanted to keep it relatable and grounded enough, but interesting and turny and twisty. And I, I, I kind of knew like that's not something that you can keep um, you know, going for seven or eight seasons, you know, with, without losing some credibility. So mm -hmm. um, I always knew it was going to be three or four seasons, but about halfway through shooting season two, it just sort of came to me. I was really just thinking about the reason why I wanted to make the show in the first place, which was an exploration of grief and loss and the power of friendship, specifically female friendship to sort of get us through the toughest of times. And when I started thinking about how best to bring closure to these characters, to Jen, to Judy, and, and to the other characters as well. This is the story that came to me. I don't want to give any spoilers, but um, you know, I figured this is to me the best way that I can give sort of healing and, and uh, a satisfying end to this story. Yeah. You mentioned closure. I wanted to ask you this too, about like, Balancing emotional closure, which I think this show, and again, not once well, but not, to, I think it does it really well, <laughs> the emotional closure and stuff. Thank and then you. also like the, you know, like you were saying, like the twisty stuff that like, maybe you left on, did you leave anything unresolved or like, how did you balance like what you wanted to like leave maybe more ambiguous and then kind of like with regard to the emotional stuff, like kind of nailing that, I guess, like, how did you like think about that? And like, kind of, did you have like, I guess, are you whiteboarding it out to like figure out like where all the story <laughs> threads are going? Like, oh, good? always. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The whiteboard is my best friend okay. and I could never do a season of television uh, specifically of this show without that. No, it's, it's very highly um, conceived, if you will. Yes. Like, yes. you know, every beat is, is laid out um, very specifically. And then we kind of go back and we, we start from the beginning and we weave things in that we've, you know, come up with towards the end of, you know, eight, episode eight or nine, we go, oh, shit, you know, we can plant something back in episode one or two. Um, and, you know, I think to me, like I wanted this show and your experience of watching the show to feel a little bit like you were going through a process of grief and healing and loss and acceptance. And to me, not every question is answered in life. You know, people come and people go and, you know, it's always that thing where you're like, oh, I should have asked my grandfather about this or my aunt. Oh my gosh, I wish I had one more conversation with her. I would have, I would have told her X, Y, or Z. And I wanted to give the show that same feeling. So I didn't feel that I needed to answer every single question or Put the period at the end of every sentence. I wanted to leave certain things to your imagination for you to think about what you would have happen or what you hope happens. And you know, it is the show is um, what it is. You know, it, it's it's a cliffhangery, twisty, turny. You know, hopefully a show that keeps you on your toes a little bit and keeps you surprised. So I wanted it to feel like that all the way to the end. You mentioned that like two earlier, like moments ago about how like you, it's finite, that kind of thing is finite, maybe right as a viewer to retain the credibility. I mean, that's one of the things I've loved about the show from the beginning. Like you said, it's like this, the incredible cliffhangers and twists and stuff, I guess, is this like for season three that are you just like, did you basically leave all of that on the field, I guess? Like, was there stuff that you were maybe holding back or that you were waiting for the <laughs> final season? to just be like, let's just throw everything here before we go, because it is continues that I think uh, in season three, the the breakneck uh, surprises. I guess I was definitely surprised watching it. A lot of things that happened. So yeah, <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. That's great. And you know, I think like you, you, you set up an expectation from the beginning. Uh, you know, or at least we we hoped to set up an, ex an expectation that like you're going to be delighted and surprised and hopefully moved and you know even hopefully sometimes in tears. You know, as it the shows you know themes reflect back on issues in your own life and. 
you know, yeah, then you feel like you have to live up to that, of course. Like you don't want to drop that element because, and also it's really fun as a writer to come up with those, you know, uh, surprises and cliffhangers and it becomes a challenge. I'm very competitive and I'm always trying to, you know, to get better, to top myself, to to challenge my writers, to, um, you know, to, to go a little bit deeper and further into where we could bring the story. And, you know, there are always things that we pull back on because you can't just do it to do, you know, you're not just going to create a cliffhanger to create a cliffhanger. Like to me, it always has to be motivated by the character, by their needs, by their fears, you know, by their uh, lack of ability to control themselves, you know? And so as long as, you know, those twists and turns feel like an actual reflection of a character's want, you know, of their nature, then I'm good for it. But, you know, otherwise uh, I would just, I, I did uh, leave certain things on the whiteboard and okay. not on the field. <laughs> you save that for the next show, man. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, you never know. You never know. Um, yeah. I'm on it. So obviously like the season was impacted by uh, Christina's health as well. Uh, she was diagnosed with MS during the production. I, there was a big article about her in the times recently about all that. I want to ask you, you know, obviously you're friends with her and then as the showrunner as well. Um, you know, how do you, how did you guys deal with that in the five month break I, in the article? It was saying that she was like, maybe, a, a, maybe the idea that the show would just kind of, not come back from that, but obviously they did. And it's so great and stuff, I guess. How did you kind of handle all that and like, like go through that? And obviously, obviously I'm sure it was incredibly emotional, but like, yeah, I'd love to know. Like, I mean, first and foremost, first and foremost, I love Christina. Like you said, I am her friend. And right. to me, that is the, the, the first, you know, wave of feelings that I would ever have. You know, I love her. I care about her. I want her to be well. Um, obviously when anything happens to someone you love, that is a challenge, uh, you know, a health, a health issue, like it becomes almost like your own issue because you care about them so much. I would say like, you know, I, I guess I handled it the way I would handle anybody going through something like with as much compassion, empathy, um, room for her to, you know, do anything she needed to do, uh, to get through this time. You know, she it was very important to her to finish this season. And it, it, you know, we absolutely, you know, I mean, like, it's, it's just a show, you know, as I mean, I love it. It's my baby, but it really is. It's a television show. She's a human being, you know, who's, you know, going to lead a, a full life and to get her back to that, you know, we were willing to stop. We were willing to do anything, you know, that needed to happen for her health. It was really Christina who wanted to finish who wanted to see this through, who wanted to tell this story. And, you know, it, it was, it was her choice. And obviously, you know, it was, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, of course, I'm extremely grateful that she made that choice. She does an incredible job as does Linda Cardellini. The, watching the two of them work together this season was truly not just like inspiring, but their partnership, their friendship is is something that I hope to emulate in my life because of the way that they supported each other. Um, and that's been true since the first episode of season one. But, you know, that's that's yeah. what I'd say about that. I mean, it's and, I, and there are scenes again, there's like a charge of those scenes, too, because of certain things. There are certain things that happen that they're <laughs> together. And I'm just like, it's incredibly emotional. I was just really getting emotional and choking up watching the show because just is like these incredible actors playing these characters who we've obviously come to love and know, and then also knowing that real life complications are, you know, obviously issues. It was just very, it's very touching and stuff. I think you directed the the finale, I believe, right? Or so, I mean- like, Yeah, the last like, two episodes. Last yeah. two episodes. You have like, you have like a front row seat for those scenes. I mean, talk about like the two, they're, they're just such good actors, I feel like. And especially with the drama, I mean, the show is a comedy, so they're very funny and they still like killer, killer, killer mm -hmm. jokes. They are very good at that. But the, the emotional stuff I found like really compelling- and especially in those last two episodes, they're doing a lot of like very dramatic stuff. And I guess as the director yeah. there doing like, what was that? Like, what do you like, what kind of, what are you telling them? I guess, or like, how did, how did you like work <laughs> on those scenes and performances with them? I just found those scenes, like, like I said, they're just incredibly well done. I mean, at this point, those women have those characters. So in the pocket, like it, I don't even know where they begin and the characters and, you know, it, they're, they're just in that skin. And they know how to play those scenes that kind of, you know, juxtapose light and dark and making you laugh one second and then really choking you up in the next. Like those two women are masters at that. 
you know, there's very little as a director that you have to do to get them to achieve greatness. And that's the truth. Like they make directors look good because of how good they are and how good they are together. So, I mean, you know, if anything, it's really just a, a modulation that you're doing. Like, you know, maybe that's a little bit, you know, too much or, you know what, you're crying is so good, but I can't understand the words that you're saying. You know, I mean, like it's, it's, um, it's really like having a front seat to like the best show you've ever seen, the best performances, you know, it, it was really like a gift. And even as the showrunner, when I'm not directing, I just sit in awe of these ladies, um, you know, Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini are, a dream team and I can only hope that in the future with whatever show you know comes next that I will be that lucky yeah. to get actors of that caliber for sure it's an incredible it really is incredible I guess and the last thing here we have to wrap up but I mean like this is the end of the show like you talked a lot about like the, the themes and stuff of the show what do you hope the legacy of Dead to Me is that people will like retain from it or think about in the you know going forward here now that it's over you know I, I hope that people carry the the feeling with them that they're left with when they finish the show. You know, I I I was, you know, compelled to make the show because I was dealing with my own grief and loss and fertility issues and all the things that um you know were were creating a sort of darkness around me. And I got through that by making the show. This show healed me. So I was hopeful that this show could heal other people by bringing them through their grief, by allowing them to feel their own losses through the losses that these characters, you know, go through. And, you know, I have heard from, you know, sort of lovely random people out there that this show is really important to them. It really feels like those women are their friends. And, you know, I think for me, like part of the legacy are the friends that I made making this show. And I feel, you know, that Linda and Christina are, are, are people I'm going to know and love and care for for the rest of my life, as well as so many other people that I made the show with. So if the audience feels that way about them, too, like that will be a legacy I'll be really proud of. For sure. It's, it's excellent way to, to sum it up. Uh, Liz Feldman, thank you so much. Uh, Dead to Me. Thank you. Final season on Netflix this month. Thank you.